Hey folks, welcome back. Um, I was just doing a live with Natalie Ross to Wellbeing and my connection went a bit unstable. So I'm going to invite her back in and just to give you um, an insight into what to expect in this conversation. Um, Natalie is joining me for the Mountain Rest Retreat that we're doing at Lamberis Retreats later this May. And she's going to be facilitating a forest bathing session um, during her time with us. So I wanted to have a, an informal Q&A with her live on Instagram so that anyone who might have any questions, plus the questions that I have, can contribute to the session or perhaps you have experience of forest bathing and you'd like to share that with us. Um, so do come along. I'm just going to wait for Natalie to join and I will let her in, but I hope you're doing okay. It's great to see you all. And um, maybe I'll just turn my chair around so that I can be a little bit closer. Big armchair. Okay. So I'm just waiting for Natalie to join us. Ah. <laughs> Hi, How's yeah. that? Is my video there? Yeah, it is there, yeah. Fantastic. Let's do this again. Let's see how we go. Okay. Let's pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll just start. Um, so welcome, and I hope you're doing okay. Um, we, obviously, we're really excited that you're going to be joining us for our Mountain Rest Retreat in mm -hmm. May. And um, really, this session is to give people an idea as to what they can expect from your time with us on that retreat. So the first question really is, you know, what is forest bathing? Yes, and a very good question. So I always tell participants, you know, I ask them if they've heard of it before and they, they come to a session. Some have and some haven't and some think they're there and they're expecting to be going swimming or something like that. But um, there's no bathing in water. Um, as you might think from the name, I understand that can be a little bit misleading sometimes. Um, but the bathing really refers to immersing yourself in nature using your senses. Um, and so forest bathing came uh, originally from Japan, but actually I think everybody has done forest bathing. Um, perhaps you might have been a child when you last did it, but essentially because it's about just being present in nature and being with what you can see, what you can smell, what you can touch and hear, um, everyone's done that. Um, and you don't actually have to be in a forest. Um, you know, it's great if you can, the more kind of, um, sort of in, in surrounded completely by nature you can be and with that nice sense of sort of being a little bit lost in nature um, then that's great because it's going to help you feel really immersed in the environment um, but you can practice forest bathing in a local park or your garden because it really is just a mindful practice of being in nature and so on a forest bathing session that's what we're doing um, and it's really lovely because people get the chance to let go of their responsibilities and they don't have to think about the route or the time. So the guide, which is me in this case, is in charge of all of that. Um, and we just go on a really lovely, gentle walk. We tend not to go very far, so we don't cover a big distance. It's not like hiking. Um, and you'll be guided in little mindful activities, things to help you hone in on your environment and really connect to what's around you reflect on what you can see and how it makes you feel and um, some of the activities can be quite playful and fun I think that's important kind of embracing the inner child and some of them are a bit more kind of um, moving or perhaps a bit more serious and it just depends on depends on the group depends on the theme depends on the season all of those kinds of things yeah that sounds amazing um obviously we're really lucky in Lamberis because the location is going to be very special and there's lots of ancient woodlands and um, the nature there is just, you know, it's outstanding. But it is really beautiful that people can just do this, um, you know, like you say, in their own back garden or in a local mm -hmm. park. Um, what are the benefits physically, mentally, energetically? Maybe you could share a little bit of that with people. Yes, there's loads of benefits. Um, it's, in my opinion, kind of the the most enjoyable way or one of the most enjoyable ways to practice self-care. So we all know about lots of things that are good for us, like exercise and eating all that veggies and that kind of thing. Um, and forest bathing has similar um, benefits to a lot of these practices, similar to yoga and meditation, in that it's proven to reduce 
heart rate, it's re proven to reduce blood pressure, um, it's proven to improve mood. So there's certain kind of things like sense of awe, curiosity, um, feeling kind of positive about other people. Um, so it can make us a bit more pro-social. Um, loads of fantastic benefits like that that I, I know from the research and also from just practicing forest bathing myself and in the participants you know I always ask people how they feel at the end and it's often a mix of, sort of very relaxed but also quite awake and aware people can feel quite inspired because you're it, effectively it changes what's going on in the nervous system when we practice forest bathing so it's really regulating and so we have that sense of relaxation and calm, um, but it's not necessarily a sleepy feeling. Of course, everyone feels differently. And it's going to depend on lots of other factors, you know, what's already going on in their lives. But usually you feel like a nap several hours later, you finish your forest bathing session, maybe you have some lunch or something, and then you want to have a lie down. Um, but during the forest bathing session at the end, people tend to feel relaxed and calm, and yet also really kind of like awake and aware and present. Um, in a really lovely way. Um, so there's there's actually decades of research now around forest bathing um, because they came from Japan and they started uh, actually with, sort of with the rise of technology in Japan and people working long hours in high rise office buildings and things like that. That was really quite different to um, sort of traditional Japanese culture, which is very rooted in nature. And the government noticed people were getting really sick from overwork and kind of one of their schemes was to put people on buses and coaches and send them um, to the forests. Um, Japan is something like 80% forest, so um, there's a lot of it there, whereas in the UK we're one of the most uh, nature-depleted countries in all of Europe, um, so a little bit harder um, for us. But anyway, they sent these people off to the forests and they would go on guided walks, like forest bathing sessions, um, because it was a government scheme, they wanted to know like, if it was working. Um, so they had to, you know, research it properly and they tested things like people's cortisol levels, which you can measure with saliva. So that, that's a stress hormone. So they'd measure that. Um, and so that's when the research began in the 80s in Japan and it's carried on ever since. And so there's a wealth of research now showing how it does reduce cortisol levels um, and all sorts of amazing things around essential oils that you just naturally smell in the forest and how these benefit us. So if you're a bit of a nerd like me, then you can get really into it. There's loads to look up. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Um, we've traveled around Japan actually, and you do see there's a lot more emphasis upon um, well-being in nature. And, you know, we actually saw people being you know taken in in buses um, like from, from old people from pensioners care homes you know kind of in groups going to the coast or to mm -hmm. a zen garden for example and just spending time in nature um, I'm really excited about about you joining us for this retreat because I'm so inspired by nature in my own practice mm -hmm. I take inspiration from the elements I draw upon the senses um, so I can't wait really for you to to join us and perhaps um, before we kind of wrap this up it might be nice for people just to have a sense of what they're going to be doing with you that morning so I think you're with us for the morning session on the Sunday um, yeah. perhaps just let people know what they can expect in that session um, yeah yeah, good idea. So we'll start off with a little bit of an introduction, some of the information I've shared today. So if people are watching, it'll be a bit of a recap, but um, new information for, for the others. Um, just a little bit about what forest bathing is and what they've <laughs> signed up for. Um, and then we'll head out and I tend to start quite gently in the sense of I suppose we're on a retreat, so people are already in that kind of mindset, um, but start to just to let people arrive in the environment. So there's no particular instruction at first, other than the invitation to kind of let go of, like I said, any kind of need to look at the time or think about the route or anything. And then we just arrive, we start to have a little bit of an explore and get to know the space that we're in. Um, and then we've got a couple of hours, so I'll probably plan sort of four or five different activities that we'll do um, that will help us get in touch with our senses. So it might be something um, like notice what's in motion. And so people will go off and find their own little space. They might have a bit of a wonder or they might decide to sit and be still. And it, it can seem like any of these things can seem like simple invitations. And they are just that, they're invitations. No one has to do anything that they don't want to do. You know, it's their time to relax and recharge. So 
of course it's supposed to be enjoyable um but these little invitations seem simple but it's that thing of the the more you look the more you see and it might not be looking later ones might be more about touching or smelling that kind of thing um and then we kind of bring we layer all the senses together as we go through the woods um and we see what we can find it's going to be springtime isn't it so i usually work with the seasons quite a lot and um, find ways of connecting people their inner worlds and, and how they think and feel about themselves to what they see in nature. Sometimes nature can help us understand something about ourselves or explain something about ourselves. So um, doing something around that, you know, I'm often really inspired by the space that we're in and I'll see something and think, oh, let's do something around this. So I have a bit of a plan, but it's a flexible plan because I like to be led by what comes up and the energy of the group and that kind of thing. And so after each invitation, which people will have a nice amount of time to kind of settle in and, and really get their teeth into and enjoy, then we'll come back as a group <clears throat> and people will have a chance to share what they experienced if they want to, that's completely optional. And then we, we do a few more and at the end of the session, we gather together again, there's the opportunity to share and I usually guide us in a short meditation to help close the session and you should read a poem or a little extract again something perhaps related to the season or maybe related to the place it could be a local poet or something like that and um, where it's connected to the land where we are um, and then we will head back and probably have some nice refreshments something like that yeah I think it's always really important isn't it to honor the land where we are mm -hmm. and kind of really really hone in on the kind of local landscape and um yeah. yeah i think the ripple effect of of what you're bringing to the retreat um is going to be very long lasting and i think that's the great yeah. thing about doing something that that is immersive you don't necessarily always um you know you might feel those physiological benefits almost mm -hmm. instantaneously and that kind of the, the yeah. calming effect but then longer term, the benefits kind of just keep rippling, weren't they? As, don't they? As we kind of have that yeah. sense of perspective or, um, you know, realising that it doesn't need to be much in order to help ourselves have some space away from our daily lives. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always think that, you know, the, the point of the forest bathing sessions is to give people that time where they are guided, they are held. Um, and like you said, you know, you experience the benefits there in the moment and that has a lasting effect. But the things that we do, as I say, they're, they're quite simple. Um, and, and my hope is that people take the concept, you know, there's loads of different invitations that I use, you know, throughout different sessions, but they take the idea of being mindful and tuning into the senses. And, you know, if you're on your lunch break on a busy day, you know, you can just do a little bit of that. It's, you know, of course, like anything, like a five minutes of yoga doesn't have the same amount of benefits as like a full hour session. It's exactly the same thing, but a little bit does go a long way and it's certainly better than nothing. If people can take the ideas, I want them to do that and, and go and apply them so the next time they go out for a walk. Yeah, and like a little bit every day will have quite a big impact, won't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, can't um, wait. Um, have you got any questions for me or anything that you would like to ask at all? Mm -hmm. I suppose, um, and maybe this is something you don't have to reply right now, but something about the, the themes for the retreat that would be really good to work into the forest bathing session um, so that it all plays together really nicely. So I always take inspiration from the seasons on these mm -hmm. retreats. Um, the mountains and the area in Lamberis, the, the surrounding landscape is so inspiring. So often um, drawing inspiration upon that mountain landscape and the, the change in light, you know, as we're there, even over the weekend, the space where we practice looks out towards um, a mountain called Ida Four or Ida Flower. And mm -hmm. we often know that one is to be a slate mountain. Um, and so throughout the day, the, the colors that are sort of coming from that mountain mm -hmm. are just incredible. Um, you kind of almost get at the, the yearly season throughout one day, just in wow. terms of shifts and light and the shadows and the colors and the textures. Um, and then just that idea of seasonal transition. So we're coming into the retreat is the 19th to the 21st of May. So it's a late spring retreat mm -hmm. and there'll be a sign of summer. There'll be something, you know, yeah. like now we're sort of early spring 
we yeah. still sort of have that leftover feeling of winter this it's still mm-hmm. cold but then we're getting that um kind of bloom of spring and the the sort of yeah i love of- those transition bits yeah. where you kind of you can see what's coming next and a bit of excitement yeah, yeah so i think mm-hmm. that will feed into the practice and um, this is love our that. first residential retreat so we called it mountain rest because we want people to come mm-hmm. and have that rest in the mountains be inspired yeah. by the landscape but ultimately kind of go away from it feeling recharged, renewed with a sense of um, fresh perspective or Mm -hmm. inspiration. Like you say, that playfulness, kind of reconnecting to something that um, perhaps has been lost or, you know, just buried Mm. away for a few years. You've given me a great idea on the theme of mountains. I'll write it down (laughs) as soon as we finish so I don't forget. Um, but yeah, already going, oh, this, oh, that. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) I know, yeah, as soon as you start sort of feeding in, the ideas mm. just just come out, don't they? But likewise with your um, with your session in the build up to to what you're offering, they'll def- will definitely be working with the senses and the elements. So hopefully, um, it will just round everything up for people. Yeah, sounds like um, it. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, yeah, we'll, shall we wrap this up? I think so. Yes, and just to let people know, if anyone does have any questions about yeah. forest bathing that haven't answered. Um, they can always just send me a, a DM or a, or a comment on this or anything, and I'll just get back to them. Yeah, so it's Natalie Rossiter Wellbeing on Instagram. Right. Um, yeah. The retreat is happening at Lamberis Retreats on Instagram. Mm. It's the 19th to the 21st of May. And um, we've just got four spaces, actually, residential mm. sites. We have a couple of ticket options for people to drop in um, if they're local. Um, so obviously we'd love those spaces to fill. But yeah, we're very excited. And I'm yeah, me to too. With you then. Oh, thanks for having the chat with me. I absolutely can't wait to be there. Okay, take care of yourself and I'll speak to you. Yeah, good to see you. Bye, bye.